that may have much more social relevance than linking the music with extra <coughs> musical additions. <coughs> Maybe it's even for me more a question than an answer. Um, another question was sound, instrument, tool, concentrated information. What does this mean to you? Sound as instrumental materiality is the starting point of composition, but sound does not exi exist by itself. It cannot conceive in isolation. Sound is always connected with, the, with its structure, space, and time of its development, its relation to other sounds, its historical context. In each piece, the necessary tools must be developed individually. And maybe a good piece contains exactly that information, materials and ideas that are necessary, not less and not more. That means no ornaments. The title of my lecture is Why Tristan? And it's also the title of a piece I composed in 2012, a piece for bass clarinet and harp. But it's only the starting point of uh, thinking about my own composing today. In 1978, Morten Feldman asked in the title of a piece for flutes, glockenspiel and piano, why patterns? Today, I often have other questions. Why again grand opera? Why symphony, etc.? And why these retreats to well-known, seeming, seemingly familiar genres? On the other hand, the question of an entirely different, but I don't know if it's more advanced, kind of recourse to already existing music as for example by using sampling techniques. And thirdly, the possibility or necessity of multimedia expandabilities of compositional thinking. Under these circumstances, is it hopelessly old-fashioned to write a piece with a minimum of chamber music instrumentation without vociferous publicity of itself, without any event character. The compositional starting point of my piece, Why Tristan, Nocturne for Bass Clarinet and Harp, is simply paraphrased. How can I use two such heterogeneous instruments as Bass Clarinet and Harp to compose this sound unity? How can I correlate them, always different, with the greatest possible transparency? A poor, immanent musical question and initial idea, large for large in its poorest form, without any reference to the reality of life. But my question is, what is reality and what is my rea reality and my life? Let us listen to the begin be beginning of the work, performed by Simone Saiba Harp and John Corbett, bass clarinet.
suddenly noticed that already in the second bar the initial interval of Wagner's Tristan and Isolde is appearing. The great tradition just caught up with me. The Tristan interval, this A and F in the beginning, could not simply be thrown away. This interval, only on the abstract level of material of course, drew such much attention uh, to itself and to me, that I could not just ignore it, hoping that it might remain undetected by the players and uh, the listeners. On the other hand, I did not want to start a big Tristan dispute. I don't want to compose my personal Tristan story. I therefore tried to keep small things as possible and continue to focus on my channel music ideas. Ever since Luigi Nono's string quartet, we know that often just in fragile chamber music there might be a great revolutionary statement. Nevertheless, as I believe, another thing is more important in the piece, a more abstract aspect, a special form idea, um, has become increasingly clear during the piece namely the multi-layer nested repeating of earlier sections of the piece at rather unexpected places. This leads toward the end, a repeat loop with absolutely increasing tempo and decreasing dynamics. <coughs> From here on, it's a section, the last section we have heard uh, in the end uh, of the example. And uh, it starts first with a normal tempo, 108. <coughs> and then, okay, it's repeated more soft in, uh, with a faster tempo, and third time uh, just more faster and as fast as possible in the last time. Um, and it's not possible to play all notes then, so uh, the notes are disappearing. But in between there are some brackets, so um, between these um, repetitions there are uh, some other materials and then again the loop begins. So uh, this uh, material um, 
is running uh, uh, to his own death or something like this because it uh, has not, it's not able, uh, possible to play all these things. Um, I think um, we can hear the end, but before um, a little thing from the middle of the piece, um, because um, at this point I remember uh, on this Tristan starting point, and I think I I will uh, uh, bring it uh, in a in a kind of um, curious way, uh, like in. No, it's not really Tristan. We will hear it and see it. of the music itself and now the music again starts at the point we have heard before and repeats the structure from before and this is the structure in the end will repeat it uh, um, several times. I think this piece is not very closely connected to the current discussions and polemics especially in Germany on subjects as conceptual music, art and life, relation to reality. But at least, as a musician, Wagner's Tristan and Isolde indeed is belonging to my life, not permanently, of course, I'm not a Wagnerian. And maybe it is belonging even more to the musical world of the two musicians who asked me to write the piece. They are both members of an opera orchestra. So, is it really a poor immanency of material reference? What is the reference to reality? 
what is the relationship between art, music, and daily living? The question might arise, what is the main content of this piece? My relationship to Wagner? I don't think so. My criticism of increasing compulsion of spectacular events within the new music scene? Maybe. Or the composed sound amalgamation and confrontation or even sound distortion of the two instruments? Or on the other hand, the delicateness of the instrumental colors as a metaphor for intimacy? A lot of questions. Um, but I think the main question is, for me, is it the job of the composer now to explain the meaning and significance of his own music? Is it necessary to explain con uh, concepts and conceptual ideas of a piece of music before listening to it? Surely, the choice of a title affects a special expectation, but it doesn't answer the question of content. I am a musician, and therefore my medium is music. The music itself has to tell everything to the audience. It shouldn't need external explanations, even if it is connected or confrontated with other music or with extra musical ideas. I hope I could outline two different aspects. First, the more abstract one, the principle of nested formal processes. I will explain it again in a little bit more detail later on, the, uh, on another piece. And second, more specifically in this piece, the relationship in dealing with external, associative, well-known or even historical material. In several of my pieces, I have set about to break open the linear formal process in a different way each time. The crucial interrupting, slicing and intersecting of different strands of formal development has led all the way up to the shattering of the formal context. The clash of more or less abstract, maybe quasi serial predeterminations with formal necessities evolving from the respective material itself, often creates contradictions, mutual deformations, sudden cuts, interruptions, discontinuation, and even silence. Such bulky complexity is focusing the listener on the intensity of the moment. On the other hand, it gives all elements a certain direction. They are moving towards something, are components of complex processes, although they are not orientated uh, on a single target, a climax or a definitive ending. A special enhancement of the technique, maybe of fragmentation uh, by Luigi Nono, I try to create a combination of linear and nonlinear concepts of time organization. This creates multiple perspectives, projections, multidimensional complexity, but also means a certain collapse of clear consistency, causality. I think a complex, multi-perspective thinking is an adequate method in our current situation to include as many achievement, achievements of music history as possible which means not excluding anything due to any dogmatism. For this reason, also the music of other cultures and the music of earlier centuries play an important role in my own work or for my own work, not in the sense of imitation or citation, but in the sense of learning, interpreting, rethinking and integrating into quite different new and individual relationships. Of course, there is a historical development of compositional material that I don't want to deny. But I believe that we have reached a point of this development 
in which the old avant-garde question of material alone is no longer of primary importance. Thinking about the internal conditions of the material and its compositional treatment therefore means to think about the maybe social, historically mediated content of musical phenomena, but also to think about the changes of such contents by new experiences. The process of reinterpretation and transformation of available, available historical mediated material should always be confronted with new discoveries, new ideas, without any conventional reference. Through various structural techniques, that means techniques of intrusion into the sound, and what is quite the same for me, intrusion into time, I try to make audible the extraordinariness, even of quite ordinary, maybe seemingly conventional things. In my piece, Schwebung und Strenge, it's uh, difficult to translate, maybe something like floating and strictness or so. Um, in this piano piece, we will hear it in the concert on Saturday. The main theme is the separation of key strike and echo, using a lot of different harmonic effects. The beginning of the piece consists of rhythmically and dynamically concise virtuosic pianistic figures. They are producing various flagellant echoes by silent pressed keys held with a tenuto pedal. Due to the, in, to the density and the tempo, in the beginning they are only subcutaneously audible. But during the piece they become more and more important and more and more audible, claiming their own musical time. The well-tempered 12-tone instrument piano gets more and more transformed into a multi-layered, vibrant, ethereal sound body. I uh, don't want to uh, play the piece now on CD because we have the chance to hear it in concert and I hope it's much better than uh, uh, this experience, live experience. Another piece, which you are and it's much more difficult, uh, I don't try to translate. Uh, for instruments and for channel tape, the main idea is the switching between live ensemble and pre-produced electronic sounds using smallest transitions at the edges of perception. All electronic sounds are developed from previously sampled sounds of the instruments. However, during the piece, relatively little manipulations soon drive them into opposition to the instrumental origin. Um, I have a score here and maybe you can have a look at the score after uh, the lesson because it's only one score. Um, and we can hear uh, some minutes of this piece.